How many times have you heard about coffee particle size distribution? What is it? And why is it very important? Stay with me in this video and I will tell you more about it. For grinding, I've used particle analysis, which tells me the size of individual particles and their overall distribution. This allows me to achieve an accurate correlation between distribution and flavor of your coffee. Hi everyone, Matteo here. In this video, I want to talk about coffee particle analysis and about the tool that helped me during the preparation for the World Brewers Cup Championship 2021 in Milan. Grinding is one of the most important variables in coffee brewing, if not the most important one. With a good quality of coffee ground, it's always easier to achieve a tasty balanced cup compared to a low quality coffee ground. But how can we determine if with our grinder we achieve a good quality of coffee ground? When we grind our coffee, the whole bean starts fermenting in smaller pieces until it arrives at the grind size desired, based on the settings of our grinder. These little fragments that on our eyes appear uniform between each other are actually not. They have different sizes because there is no perfect coffee grinder and all these sizes together determine what we call coffee particle size distribution. This distribution can be analyzed. There are different tools and technologies that allow us to understand more about the composition of our ground coffee. But most of them are very expensive and not portable. But I've been lucky enough to get to know this little machine. This is the CPA and it stands for Coffee Particle Analyzer and is produced by 3Temp, a Swedish company leader in high-end professional coffee machines for filter coffee. They were awesome to support me during the preparation of the World Brewers Cup Championship in Milan and also support the research on my competition coffee. And I have to say that what I found with this little machine is something that I didn't expect at all. First of all, let me explain how it works. After we got our coffee ground, we take a sample of the coffee with a specific tool and put the grounds to analyze inside this spreader. This allows the coffee particles to spread on top of the white surface. And here is where the sample is analyzed. The technology used by CPA is photo analysis, where the machine analyzes the coffee particles from different angles and all together capture in a single picture. The software measures the particles based on their surface area and then translates the data in graphs, which tell us the exact size of the particles and their overall distribution. How do we use all this information? As I said on the stage in Milan, this allows me to achieve an accurate correlation between distribution and flavor of your coffee. This was my main goal to find a correlation between coffee particle size distribution and coffee sensory experience. Basically, translate numbers in sensory analysis. So, this is what I've done with the help of my team. I ground my coffee in different ways, using different grinders and also different grinding techniques. I run five samples of each dose to get a more accurate data average. Then I cupped and brew all of them and blind tasted them. After I scored and chose the best cups, I compared them side by side with the data collected with the CPA to see if there were any correlations between graphs and sensory profiles. What I found was actually very interesting. I always thought that with all the particles of the same size, basically, a narrow distribution of the grounds, I could achieve a better cup of coffee. But I was actually wrong. I found out that a more even distribution spread throughout the micro spectrum gives a more complex cup of coffee. Probably because particles extracted in different ways give different attributes that altogether create a balanced and complex cup of coffee. 
So it's normal to have some over extraction from the fines and some under extraction from the boulders. They could create different layers of taste in the cup. But something that I noticed was that when we had some distribution spikes over the 1200 microns, it was bringing dryness in the cup, probably derived from the high concentration of boulders, causing high sourness compared to the cups without the concentration of these coarse particles. This mainly can depend on the quality of the grinder, the type of burrs we use, and also on the grinding technique. About grinding technique, I will talk about this in another video, so make sure you subscribe and turn on all the notifications so you won't miss it. After this series of experiments, I wanted to find out if it was possible to find a correlation between selected distributions and specific flavor profiles. So using the best grinding practice that I found on the first part of the experiment, I started to grind and then separate distributions with the help of a sifter to obtain different micro ranges from the same coffee. I blind cut every single range to see what was the difference. What I found was again very interesting. The cup with the smaller particles between 200 and 400 microns definitely had the harsher taste in mouth. I was actually expecting that. I found bitterness from over extraction, but also some dark chocolate and brown sugar notes. The experiment started to be more interesting when I started to cup the coffee with a distribution between 400 to 600 microns and 600 and 800 microns. The berry compote strawberry jam was coming out. I knew that this was the main characteristic of the coffee since the first time I tasted it and I could strongly identify between the two cups. In the cup with a distribution between 800 and 1000 microns I found higher acidity, mainly citrusy, with the notes of grapefruit. In the last ones with a distribution between 1000 and 1200 microns and 1200 microns and 1400 microns I didn't find anything interesting, too weak and not enough extraction. When I put all the distribution together, the cup was more round and all the elements were playing an important part on the overall testing experience. So, after this experiment, another question came to mind. Am I able to design the flavor notes of my cup? What happens if I take a specific amount of different distributions and mix them together? So, I started to mix some of these distributions using different ratios. I uploaded samples of each mix in the CPA and then I blind tested them. I have to say there was a correlation. When I was creating a mix with a higher percentage of particles with a distribution peak around 600 and 700 microns, I was getting a higher intensity of berry notes. And when I was creating a mix with a higher percentage of particles with a distribution peak around 900 and 1000 microns, I was getting more citrus, bright notes. Basically, I was able to create a wider range of flavors in the cup. And this is exactly what I did in the competition. I mixed two distributions. One, 10 grams of coffee with a distribution peak at 600 microns. And the second one, three grams of coffee with a distribution peak at 1000 microns. Now, what you should take from this video. First of all, a wider and even distribution gives a more complex cup. But if we have too much boulders or too much fines, the cup can result in unpleasantly balanced. So we have to say that grinder matters. Now, there are a lot of different grinders in the market. Some of them are great and most of them work pretty well. Some grinders are better for espresso and some better for filter. So it's really important to get the one that suits you. Secondly, it's possible to design a specific cup of coffee by mixing different distributions. That's what I found during the preparation for the competition, but more experiments are required to give 
a general guidelines about this distribution mixing. So I want you to take my experiments as a reference. I use one or two specific coffees to run my research, so that doesn't mean that works with all the coffees, but it's a starting point. If you want to experiment and you have the possibility, do it. And I would like you to let me know if you find anything interesting by leaving a comment in the section below. If you want to share with me something you have already done or you just want to ask me a question, don't hesitate. I will be happy to answer. This will help all of us to improve and understand the coffee particle size distribution better. As a conclusion for this video, I want to say that I feel very lucky to have had the opportunity to work with the CPA. I'm not here to say you should buy it. Also, I just want to specify that this video is not sponsored by Tritemp. But I think that the more we go forward, the more these kind of technologies are more accessible and useful to create what matters the most. Delicious cup of coffees. Thank you very much for watching. Press the like button if you haven't done it yet and subscribe if you want to support my channel. This will mean a lot for me. I will see you in the next video and in the meantime I wish a wonderful day.